Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video I'm going to be talking about all the books that I'm planning to read in November. I feel like this month has flown by. October has been one of the best reading months in terms of quality that I've had in a while and so that is going strong. I'm hoping that will continue into November and I have a lot of exciting books on deck and I have another secret TBR coming your way this month which I'm not going to tell you anything else about it but just know that there are a few books that you're not seeing in this video that I will be reading in November and I'm quite excited for that. But with that said, let's go ahead and start with the books that I can share. First up is the pick for Patreon Book Club. Every month my patrons get to vote on a book that we read together. We do a different genre every month and for November the genre was cozy fantasy. The book that everybody voted on was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, the first book in the Winter Night trilogy. I'm really really excited for this. I actually have read The Bear and the Nightingale but it's been a few years and I never did continue on with the trilogy and have been wanting to so I thought this would be a great opportunity to go and refresh my memory of what all happened. I remember loving this. I gave it five stars the first time around so I'm really hopeful this will be good and it's the perfect book to read in winter time. It's like a cozy fantasy set in a magical alternate version of Russia. It's got a strong female character as the lead. It's really smart and I'm excited for it. So going to be reading that with my patrons in November. As always, huge thank Thank you to all of my patrons. Your support means the world to me and helps me be able to continue doing what I do. And a special shout out to all of my patrons at the new release hardcover level and above, currently including Trina from Bookish Trina, Ashley from Books with Ashley, Jillian from Jillian's Book Chatter, Maggie from Stormy Reads a Lot, Teresa from That Gemini Reader, and most recently, Amy. Thank you so much to all of you. Every month my patrons are also entered into a raffle and the winner gets to select a book that they want to see me read and review in the coming month. This month the winner was Karen from Run to Write Reads and I will link her channel down below. She's fantastic if you want to follow her. The book that she picked for me to read is Passing by Nella Larson, which is perfect because I have been meaning to read this. It's been on my TBR and I never got around to it. So I'm really excited for this. It's not terribly long but it is a classic of the Harlem Renaissance following three black women who are friends. Two of them decide to live lives passing as white women and one of them does not and it kind of investigates what do those choices mean for them going forward in life. Really excited for it. I hear fantastic things and I'm very happy that Karen is pushing me to finally actually read this book. So that is going to be happening for sure in November. Then I have three books that were sent to me for review that I'm hoping to get to this month. First up is a middle grade kind of sci-fi novel by an indie author that sounds really interesting. This is Pleasant Grove by Jason Price. It's set in a small town that seems idyllic but it's surrounded by a giant dome. Nobody can go in, nobody can leave until one day a stranger appears. Very very intrigued by the premise. I have high hopes for this and I'm really looking forward to it so thank you to Jason for sending me a copy. I'll let you guys know what I think. Then Glastown Entertainment sent me a copy of Hush by Dylan Farrow. She's a leader and activist in the Me Too movement and this is her debut YA fantasy story that clearly has parallels to the Me Too movement and it's something I'm definitely interested in reading. I've been hearing good things about it. Also it's really pretty. It's got like super cool end papers and whatever. So thank you to them for sending a copy. It says they use magic to silence the world. In the land of Montaigne language is literal magic to the select few who possess the gift of telling. This power is reserved for the bards, a group that has almost always been men. Who will break the hush? And the main character is a teen girl. This sounds really intriguing so I'm hoping to pick this one up in November. And then lastly, because I don't think I'm going to get to it this month from Quirk Books, I've got The Fangirl's Guide to the Universe, a handbook for geek girls by Sam Maggs. This is a YA nonfiction book that looks super super fun. Being the geek girl that I am, I'm like so ready for it. They sent really cool stickers. It talks about cosplay and fandom and going to conventions. It's going to be really fun and probably not too long. And I want to kind of do some work in this too. They also sent the accompanying Fangirl's Journal for Leveling Up, Conquer Your Life Through Fandoms, which looks really cool. I showed this off in my, my book haul that I filmed today, but this is so fun and I really want to do it. It's got stuff about like 
OTPs and creating an, your avatar and your fandom things. It just, they, they look great. So super fun, planning on checking those out this month. And then before I get to my e-arcs from Neck Alley that I'm planning on reading, I wanted to share a few other books that I'm hoping to pick up if I have the time. First up is Lightbringer by Claire Legrand. This is the third and final book in the Imperium trilogy, which I absolutely adore. This is upper YA epic fantasy with messy female main characters. I loved books one and two and I'm really excited to read book three so I'm hoping I can get to this this month. I also want to read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is her latest book and Kayla from Books and Lala basically sold me on this by saying it's a slow burn character driven story following this girl across centuries who's made a deal with the devil getting immortality in exchange for no one ever remembering her and it just sounds like it's going to be very up, much up my alley and it's also just a beautiful beautiful book that I am happy to have pre-ordered so hoping to pick that one up in November. Then I want to read Fear the Drowning Deep by Sarah Glenn Marsh. This seems like a good time to read it. It's a spooky book set in the early 1900s and I recently bought the companion novel that just came out to this. So I want to read book one first and then I can read the companion novel. So hoping to get to this one this month. And then the final physical book that I'll mention is Ties That Tether by Jane Garo. This was my book of the month club pick for October and I'm on the wait list for the audiobook from my library and it looks like I'm probably gonna get it in November which is great. This is a debut novel by a Nigerian author who had immigrated to Canada I think around 12 years old is what it says in her bio and the main character in this book Book is also an immigrant from Nigeria who ends up in a relationship with a white man and is grappling with the difficulties and challenges of being in that interracial relationship and what she's going to do about it and her family's expectations of her. Thematically this sounds really interesting. I don't know if it's a genre romance. I don't know if there's a happily ever after ending or not but regardless I hear good things about it and I am planning on reading this one in November. All right with that said let's go ahead and get into the neck alley books that I have to read this month. First up I have Bright and Breaking Sea by Chloe Neal, I think is the author. This one sounds interesting. It's a swashbuckling adventure with a strong dash of romance. The main character is a female pirate and early reviews look interesting. So I'm not always a huge fan of books set at sea, but this one was intriguing enough and it has magic elements to it that I decided to go for it. Then we've got The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. This one is also coming out in November and it looks really interesting. It's a witchy YA, maybe new adult story following a girl in her first year of college who's pledging to a sorority of witches. So that sounds like fun. Next up I have Rent a Boyfriend by Gloria Chow. She's the author of American Panda, which I read previously and enjoyed. This one looks interesting. It's another one following a girl in college who ends up hiring a guy to be her fake boyfriend to please her Taiwanese parents, except things go very, very wrong. Looks like it's going to be a fun rom-com. Then I've got Camelot Betrayal by Kirsten White. This is the follow-up to the Guinevere Deception, which I liked it. I didn't love it, but I'm really curious to see where it goes and if it's going to take the twist that I'm expecting. So we'll see. I'm going to try out the second book and see if I like it enough to want to continue on with the series. I think maybe it's going to be a trilogy or is it just a duology? I'm not sure so we'll find out. <laughs> then we have Super Fake Love Song by David Yoon. This is another more comedic YA coming of age story that looks like it's going to be fun. Then finally I have an audio review copy of Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. She is the best-selling author of the Lunar Chronicles but this is her first time writing a contemporary romance. It's a romantic comedy about a girl who is able to give good and bad karma to the people around her and she's an overachiever who tends to be pretty judgy so that should be an interesting one. I'm really curious to see how she does with a contemporary novel. And that is pretty much it. I'm excited because I feel like this month is going to leave more space for mood reading, which I've really been wanting to be able to get back to. I've knocked out a ton of neck alley arcs and so I'm feeling a little more on top of things and able to read some more things I want to get to. I know this is still a pretty large TBR, but keep in mind some of them are things that I want to read and may or may not get to. And I also do tend to read a lot of books, so that's part of it. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about today. And for your question of the day, tell me about a series that you keep meaning to finish and have not gotten back to. Like The Bear and the Nightingale, for me, I've been meaning to read these books forever and now I'm 
hoping to do it this winter. Is there a series like that for you? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.